Welcome to the 258 podcast. Um, I am joined this week by the uh, delightful and the very funny, the very smart Mr. Zachary Wilcox, uh, who I went to film school with way back when in 2004, 2005. So we've been pretty good friends for about 13 years, but not really like the best of friends until like 2006. Um, he did, uh, he directed his first feature film that he wrote and shot in Michigan, uh, called hunting lands. It's a very, very good film for people who are film enthusiasts. Um, but it was a great pleasure to, to, to talk to him. He flew in from LA to play at the Southside film festival down in, uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I went down, watched the flick with them. And then, uh, you know, we spent a couple days together here up in Scranton and, you know, had a very good time, very good talks, bunch of stuff that I missed when I was uh, not in L.A. (laughs) So um, I also did something very stupid, considering that um, for what I do for a living is that... uh, I was really excited to have Zach on, so I hooked uh, the GoPro up for the wide shot and forgot to plug it in, so the battery dies halfway through. So anybody watching online, I have no idea what I'm going to put in there yet, but I'm hoping that, that I won't be judged on this, especially by Zach. Stacy unfortunately, couldn't join us because she was down in Atlanta, Georgia, believe it or not, uh, meeting with film royalty. Uh, I don't want to tell you too much, but his most recent catchphrase is get off my lawn. So Stacy's uh, Stacy's crushing it. Stacy's killing it just like Zach is. So um, we talk a lot about, uh, about uh, you know, meeting each other, growing up, how he grew up, uh, what, what, what growing up was like for him. How did he navigate to film and how he made his first feature film? Zach's a very smart, funny guy and, uh, very empathetic. <laughs> Contrary to what most people think about him, he's, he's, the, he's one of the most, uh, thoughtful people I've ever met. So, uh, for the people on YouTube and Facebook, I'm going to throw the trailer in right here before we get into it. And then, uh, for the people listening on iTunes and, and other podcast mediums, we're just going to jump right into it. So here you go. Everything in the woods is a choice to make. And most of the time, it's the path of least resistance. The scents they smell, the prints they see, they can block that path. Everything has an impact. Everyone makes their own choices. I made mine as much as you made yours. And they all sit in judgment of the way they decide to live, but it doesn't matter what the verdict is. They're always going to have to live with the consequences. Yeah, we've been. What are you start? What are you starting? Since when? Since I didn't let you know. Oh, that's terrible. We started like the Nerdist. Do you ever listen to the Nerdist? Yeah. So it's just like that. We just roll into it. Did did I have a moment? Was I like sexist at the beginning and I didn't no, know about no, it? No, no, you're like, good. I mean, I'm not going to use any of that okay. other shit of me like rearranging your insecurities. Oh, cool. <laughs> like, you know, that's good. Yeah, so I'm not going to do that. That whole thing about the Golden Girls, like that was a joke. You never said anything about the Golden Girls. I did. Are you sure? No. Um, okay, so how are you? I've been having a good day. It's been a good day. Has it with me? Yeah, rolling that around sounds Scranton, terrible. taking a look at this this beautiful town. What do you think? I I love it. I, now I, now don't be don't don't blow smoke. No, that's not a blowing smoke kind of thing. That's uh, I don't know. I I'm coming out from L.A. and it's it's 
it's stucco and and drab. Just I. The thing is, all the old neighborhoods are, and then everything else is like, you know what we'll use? We'll use tin sheeting. And I'm like, like. <laughs> What does that mean? Is this fucking classy? Like all of a sudden, is that the thing where it's like, oh yeah, you know what? Everything everywhere new is gonna look like the inside of oh, a Chipotle. Oh, like the stuff we saw last night on the fr- on the turnpike. What is what I'm saying? It's a fucking it's the Chipotle. It's the uh, inside of yeah, a Chipotle on the outside on of the buildings. outside of the house. Yeah, it doesn't make any uh, sense. Why are they doing that right now? Um, can you? I don't know because we ran out of other stuff. Because no one wants to feel like they live in a brick building anymore. It's like the brick building. You know, like even after it burns down, you can rebuild it. It's great. Brick yeah, is but fantastic. The, but the but the metal. Like the corrugated metal. Oh, yeah, and they're just into it's it. It's fucking terrible. I don't know. All right. That's so a hipster thing of like, I really want to look like I'm super poor. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never, I've never understood it because, and maybe that's, and I didn't grow up like poor, poor, you know? No, but you I weren't like, you know, destitute on the streets. No, no. No. I mean, like, I do have like. But I, you do have a blue collar background. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I like eating stuff directly out of a can and things like that. You know, like certain <laughs> things that like, you know, I'm, I'm apocalypse prepared. I feel like remotely. Are you a, a like, doomsday prepper? No. No. But you just think about doomsday often. I think about how it could come, come about and, and I've been wrong a lot. Like a lot of times where I was like, oh, this are you is, like, this so is it's it. like, you feel like one of those like cults that it's like the end of the world's coming in, in October. No, I mean, prepare it, yourself. I don't. And you're like, oh, we. We missed the date. Uh, we were wrong. It's re- actually 12 years from now. <laughs> I refuse to... Sus- every cult was made to marry children. What do you mean? Every cult. Every cult that's like... And even the ones where they're like, but they didn't have any child brides. And I'm like, no, they, they did. Like, there's no... <laughs> even Heaven's Gate was like, that's the only one where it's kind of an outlier because that guy was just like, he's like all the men... In, he's like, all the men in the cult uh, were all going to be castrated. And then he was the only one who didn't do it. He didn't do it? No. I watched the documentary in Heaven's Gate. They never mentioned that. Yeah, I don't think he did it. So, um, he kept his equipment. No one else had it, but they all wear the track suits. Yeah. I mean the tracks, that's, that's pretty kicking. If you could start doing like, <laughs> if I did a cult, if I had to pick one to, to like the, the things that I would take is the track suit. I do the track suit. I not def- the castration, not the castration. I drop no. the castration. Um, I d- definitely more of like a wild, wild country, like a free love cult would probably work, I guess. Like off the grid, everyone's working together. Yeah, yeah. You for do like the a commune common, thing. Yeah, and then, but then, yeah, ha- but then, eventually, the government's going to be like, you can't do that. You got to pay the taxes and stuff. And they come in, and then I got a Jim Jones every or no, what's it? <laughs> it was Jim Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones. I got a Jim Jones. Everybody, I'm like, <laughs> hey, bro. All right. So, do you remember how um, we met? Because there's, there's a lot of people that don't know a lot about me. This, and this, I don't want to make this like about me. Oh, we, but can, we, can, we can make it about you, but it no, won't, I don't want to. I just want to talk. A, it won't be a pretty expose. <laughs> That's a, it'll uh, have that. But how did how did we we were talking about this last night? So for people who don't no, know, I know the first time I ever uh, the first time I ever met well, you. Do you want me to get, do you want me to give clarity on why you and I are sitting here right now? No, let's talk about that. All right, then. Okay, then let's let's talk about me. Oh, wait, then. what would that be? what would that be? Well, because nobody knows who the fuck you are. Give me like right a here. swift pitch. It was going to be like, it was going to be like, hey, you know, I was going to talk about like, you're in town promoting your film at a film festival down at the Southside Film Festival down in Bethlehem. Yeah. You and I have known each other for... 13 years. What, 2005? Yeah, probably. Yeah, 2005, so 13 years. We lived in LA together. But those were like the dark days of my life that I don't really like remember. It was like working all week and then it was like party all weekend and then yeah i didn't hang out with you when you were working all week so that was no no no, so no, no the no. only mark that i knew was the mark where i like come over and and just liquor and, and you'd have like a ridiculous like the pool day is still like that's the day of what's the wait wait where wait, i came wait, over the, and i'm like i'm like oh who's you know i talked to jen and i was like oh what what's going on today and she's like and i don't remember <laughs> like lee left the house lee was always over at your place Lee Perez, yeah. Yeah. So, Perez Gonzalez. Yes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. And you say it like you're the weather lady or something. Yeah. I say it like I'm Texican. Guatemala. <laughs> and just all of a sudden. Pakistan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. The pool day for me. Lee went over there for some reason and, and, and they, they went somewhere. So when I stopped by, because Lee was like, oh, head over later, you know, because I wasn't ready to leave yet. Right. And, uh, and then I showed up and this was like the weirdest thing. And she's like, Oh, well, Mark's out in the pool. And I go out there and you are like lobster red already. Cause you've been in there for like five See, no, we hours. We talked about this. I don't remember By this. the time I got there. And it was like, we were, by the end of the night, you were complaining about it so bad. You're still sitting in the pool. <laughs> so you wouldn't get out of the pool. And we're like the sun setting and you're like, it's going to be fine soon. Cause the sun setting. And we're like, we probably need to take you to the hospital. <laughs> 
But I was drinking all day in the pool, wasn't I? I think that was the margarita machine. Where I, where I brought the where I brought the extension cord and the margarita machine yeah, right next to it because like we had a step in the in the, it was a concrete pool and we had a yeah. step. It was like shallow end that you could Otter sit Pop on. Margaritas. It was Otter Pop Margaritas. Yeah. yeah. It was like I would take I would take purple and blue and make cotton candy. And yeah, they were gross. I loved them. I thought they were fantastic. That's because you got drunk enough. That's like anybody who's. <laughs> There's a there's like the beer connoisseur thing where it's you got that buddy who's like secretly uh, an alcoholic, but right. he's like I just really love craft beer, and it's like after your first beer, you're not tasting that craft beer anymore. It's not worth it. Like you should start start off on the friggin' you know twelve dollar bomber like the, 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 or something. Well, I would use like the frambois. I would I would I would drink that, but after after one, you'd be like, oh. Yeah, and then after that, switch to... To Miller Lite. Yeah, switch yeah. to something... Sw- I don't even care what it is, you know, like anything cheap, you know? You want to do some freaking old times or something like that, so, but it's like watching somebody drop freaking 40 bucks in a night, because they're like, my palate is discerning. It's like, not after your head. <laughs> my palate is discerning. No, just, you know, I really... I, I more enjoy... He, it's, 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 I don't know how to I'm, fa- I'm falling through a fucking crevice over here of just, like, cable, because I broke the Mac. Um... All right, so I, th- there's interesting parallels between your life and my life and how we grew up and what we grew up surrounded by, like, like economically and, like, environmentally. Like, I think your life is a little bit fucked up, but at, and I mean that with all due respect. <laughs> Instead of saying, fun, no, you just have, like, all these crazy stories about, like, man, like, that's, like, 12 lifetimes. Like, no, but, like not a lot of people have the stories that you have. Oh, no, I mean, I was danger prone. When yeah. I was younger. Well, I've always, and I wanted to, the reason I wanted to have you on is because, you know, I think of you as like a raconteur, like who can, who just like somehow just segues into like, you know, we're talking about like, you know, Swiss family Robinson and you're like, that's a parallel for the apocalypse. You know what I mean? Like, like how we have our conversations, but you grew up in, in New York. Yeah. Uh, outside of, I mean, I usually, when people ask, I'm like Saratoga because no one knows. Because it's the racetrack. Yeah, no one knows, no one knows, like... I can't find Saratoga on a map. East, east in New York is where I grew up. I mean, like, pretty much born and raised on the edge of Vermont in, uh... So, like, up, up. In Camden Valley. So, it's outside of Arlington. So, like, just a little bit north of Bennington. Or north... But, like... West-ish. But I just, I just took you on a tour here, and you're like, it's very similar. Yeah, they look the same. This has got, this has got more development than that has by far, you know? And it's like, but that's... When I think about the places that I really love, and it's it is that sort of thing where like in when I was younger, like I enjoyed punk shows in Albany and like going through Troy, and it was it was, and I don't I don't want to be rude to Troy, but it was it was a terrible, horrible like hellhole of a place, <laughs> and like I just remember looking at all this stuff, and I'm like, this is it's beautiful, you know, it's like seeing like, but how terrible it is, it's beautiful. Oh yeah, we used to have this like rusted out mail truck. In my grandparents, like my grandfather had sawmills, right? So they had a bunch of. We were telling me it was and, like and, a like, lumberman it, or something. Like logging and and yeah. then like excavation, all sorts of like. He, but like it's just all this old equipment that he kept running forever, and it's like I literally grew up with like I don't know if anybody's a John Deere fan, but we had a ten ten and a John Deere B, which are like the John Deere B is the for, or maybe it's a ten ten, whichever one of I don't know. One of them is like the two tractor <laughs> tires on the front are together. It's like oh, a yeah, three-wheeler yeah, yeah, of a tractor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, a, it's like yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's ancient beauty. And he just <laughs> kept him living, man. And, okay. and like he grew potatoes. That was like one of his things. So we'd have like, we'd, we'd walk the potato field at night, you know, like as the sun's going down and like pick potato bugs and you put them in a jar of kerosene and it's like all sorts of weird stuff. What? Like he, he ran, he cut all his own firewood, which meant I cut all his own firewood. <laughs> and then... Yeah, and, and it was like that weird thing of like when we mo- we moved away from it when my mom so my mom married my my stepfather who's you know my dad and uh, how old were you when that happened five six. was that was that weird for you somewhere in there no no it was like the I best, mean was she dating him for a very long it's time like the best or? thing that could happen I don't know I probably was more into it than she was I think at that point or something <laughs> I was like yes. Father. Well, I want to. I want to get. I well, want. Because I had my grandfather, but he's like an old man, and he doesn't like to talk much, and he's really angry about stuff all the time. <laughs> and and he's like, he was one of my favorite people. Like my grandparents, <laughs> I was one of those kids where it's like, until I was sixteen, I'd be like, I'm going to grandma's this weekend, every weekend. And it was like manual labor. I was signing up to like go. Yeah, to like work the trenches. <laughs> yeah, go, go do the work that he can't do by himself. Right. And I'm like hauling wood around and splitting wood all weekend long. <laughs> 
and you know, and your parents are sitting there going like, "What is like? Are we that horrible that you're just gonna, <laughs> that, that you'd rather go yeah, like you've, cho- you've yeah. chosen a North Korean concentration camp yeah. over? No, it's a Texas work prison. You know, like <laughs> that's what he ran, and uh, just for the grandkids. And I loved it, and like it's just that that was the thing. It's like he would talk about. I mean, in so in my film, in my film Hunting Lands, like... Well, I want to get to that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, there's so much of that, that like that end dialogue is just things that he would say. And he'd say them to himself. He wasn't talking it to me. It wasn't wisdom that he was like imparting on me. He'd just look, look down at some tracks in the ground and he'd be like, you know, our footprints in this run of tracks. He's like, that fox, never use this trail again. It's whole life. He'll never use it. And it was just to himself. Just like one footprint. And he's like, that's, that's going to change everything for, for an animal. You know, so how do you, okay. So how do you, how do you go from, um, th- th- that upbringing to you were 16 to ending up in Orlando, Florida at the same time I'm there? Oh, I mean, I had it. I, cause you went to, you went to a four year school, didn't you? Yeah, no, I went to, I did a, but I didn't know while I did like two year freaking community college and then four year school to finish up and then, and then Orlando and then finish that well, you degree. You did six out years and then, and then went to? No, no, four years, but like okay. two you years. Did two and two. I did my associates at, at, <clears throat> at SUNY Adirondack. So, uh, so then, what did you go to there to school for then? Mass communications. What? I don't even know what that means. It's just mass communications, like TV, radio, that sort of thing. So it's basically like the general. Yeah. So like it's like, the, the, it's like, it's like the tip of the umbrella. Yeah, and you can like so. There's no like disciplines. It's you just, can get an internship at a radio station and go and do that. I worked at a radio station for a bit, and like it's it's fun. Well, because when I because when I knew but, I didn't I didn't realize this, and you and I were discussing this last night, is that I I always thought that you were there for film. No, no, I went for recording arts, man. I was all about the music. But what drove you there? Like, what was the thing that made? I you... I had a really really crappy uh, emo screamo band. Um, you did? Yeah. What yeah. did you, did you play? What did you, what did you do? Um, no, I didn't play guitar in the band. I do love to play guitar, but I didn't play guitar in the band. Did you but sing? I, yeah, I was just the lead singer. In a crappy emo band? In a, yeah, in a crappy emo band. What would you sing about? I don't know, man. Like Cigar- em- emotional stuff? Cigarettes and coffee and fucking girls being jerks. And Do you look back on that and you're like, oh. No, I don't think I was overly dramatic with any of that stuff. We were pretty, like, pretty one note. But, it's, it, but, it, but it seemed like you understood. I always feel like there's that one where it's like, a, and and everybody who's ever been involved in like a music scene in their local town yeah. knows the like one guy in the band who's like, you know, he's he's the guy that he's like, all my songs are about death. And it's like, dude, like <laughs> your grandparents are still alive. Like you've got no, <laughs> you've got nobody that ever died. And he's like, yeah, but I mean like Robert Frost died, man. It's like, that's, you weren't even alive. It doesn't work. You, you know, know, two roads diverge in a wood. Yeah, he's like, let me tell, let me tell you about Robert Todd Lincoln. It's like, dude, no, it doesn't work. That you can't write these heartfelt songs about. I mean, you can. You can do whatever is you that want. Frust- is that frustrating to you? Because I, I think, I think you're a blue collar filmmaker, and I think that's what I am too. Because I think that it's like we're not like we're those people who can appreciate the art, but we don't let it consume us. Where other people, like you see them sitting around, like the emo guy, where he's like talking about death, where he's just like, that's his, like, he's just yeah, he's consumed. Fu- he's, f- he's consumed himself with the, that's with bullshit. Like, anybody can do, that's, that's the thing. It's like everyone, no one, no one wants to realize that it's like. It's all a facade. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the, uh, the, the facade is wearing out. The mascara is running on that kid, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and he he or she is sitting back going like, you know, I just, this one's really going to knock it out of the park. And then they have their first one, they get stomped on a bit, and they realize that, like, the things that they thought were the point of the films that they love so much, weren't they weren't the point. You know, they weren't the reason why middle America could watch it and go, I love this movie. Right. That the different meanings that you can get out of those layers, they don't have as much. Like, people can watch my film and look at it as if it's an art house movie, and other people watch it, and they realize that it's a movie made... It's, it's, I mean, it is, it's made for, it's made for the working class, you know? And I mean, do you think, I mean, do you, th- is that something that you learned? Cause okay. So let, it's so not let's, like they can't appreciate can, art just because we, they, they, they don't, you know, like take a trip to France once a year <laughs> with their friends, you know, like it's just not, it's not, a, they don't own a yacht. Sure. But like it's, they, they can still appreciate a story that is accessible, told to them in an art house style. And, and is that it, because, okay. So like. So I don't, I actually don't know our audience that listens to this. Like we have, 
it's not like I'm on billboards and people walk up to me like I'm some like I'm Tom Lycus. <laughs> That does it. That's the worst, the worst example ever. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm I'm not Rush Limbaugh, but if I were, I would be Tom Likas. Yeah. Um, so, I I always try to convey like the honesty of of like what this is because it's not like this. This is the this is the entertainment business. This is what we're in, right? Regardless on. You know, my vocation, which right now is the commercial work and, you know, marketing and yeah. advertising, it's it's still entertainment because at some point, like, I have to convey a message and you have to feel something and it has to be accessible and it has to be something that you're, that you're comfortable with. So, to me, everything that we do is entertainment. Yeah. Because it, because the, every because commercial, the commercials have been, see, I mean, obviously like they're, I love the idea of people being like, it's infotainment and I'm like, it's okay. It's a commercial. It's a commercial. Yeah. But the whole idea of like putting some humor into a commercial or just being able to deliver something in a way that it makes it palatable. I mean, there's an art form. There's definitely an art form and an entertainment form to food. Oh, absolutely. You know? And it's like, and people look at that. It's like, there's, that's, there's an entertainment value to that. And if it's not entertaining, you're going to go to the restaurant that is, you know? So it's, it's like, you still need to have your eye excited when you go in, you know, you want to smell a certain, you know, like your favorite dish coming across. But that's, that's, point. that's and entertainment. Don't you think like anything, well. I think anything that you see in here is some sort of form of it. I don't think I'm not, I'm not necessarily because a true, because a successful artist in any discipline, I think to, to them, because th this was, at, this, this was, I think this is going to go to that place where I'm going to be like, I disagree with that because I think a successful artist makes art for themselves and audience be damned. If they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. And, but, but, but isn't there, isn't there a flip to that, to that coin about, about success where, where like, like, okay. So like for a filmmaker, right. You can make the 24 hour, you know, Andy Warhol playing Pac-Man movie and oh, consider yeah. that art. And some people might find that entertaining. Yeah. But Andy Warhol was already successful being weird through there. But but he talked you don't you don't think Andy Warhol ever had a conversation about money? I think he definitely did. But I, isn't that I, isn't I, that he probably it, he probably had it like, you know, <clears throat> in a one word a minute conversation like an Andy Warhol conversation, <laughs> which would be that'd be art in and of itself, you know, like Sitting him down and being like, So what do you what do you think about like W fours? And he'd be like, oh, let me tell you something about w forms. it's like you'd have that <laughs> moment and you'd be like well I, I can i can listen to this all day long there's plenty of people that are like that too where it's like it does it doesn't matter what it is but so it's like jj abrams you can listen to him talk about making movies and he's genuinely excited about it and even though like he he he's definitely more of a popcorn guy now than he ever was before you know yeah but i mean this is a guy that started with felicity I know, and that was just to make some cash. Actually, his first you film know, was get, regarding Henry. A, which is, that's a weird one to start. Isn't Especially it really? for where he's at now. Isn't that weird? That was, was like the first script But you bought. can take the actual artist, you know, like the, like the stray, like, like, uh, Shane Carruth. Like I love, for, I love. For, that's uh, a upstream color. Uh, primer. Let's, we'll ignore it. Yeah. Upstream color was like the, it's, but <clears throat> that's the thing. He was going for art and he did his art thing. And like with upstream color for me, I was like, this is everything artistic without the heart. You know, so he wanted to get all of these like ideas out of his head that he had and they were all kind of piece patched together. And and for me, it didn't hit, you know, but at some it point probably hit for a bunch of people. That but are at some totally point before that film got made, he had to find somebody to give him money to make that movie. No, well, he did primer and that's what got him the money to make that movie. And after he made that movie, no one gave him money again. So it's after like, he made upstream color. Yeah, because it just didn't do what primer did. I mean, primer was nine grand. And they filmed it not knowing how to make a film. And when they made, not knowing how to. What was the shooting ratio? It was like one and a half to one, wasn't it? I don't know. Something crazy. It was like every take they used. Yeah. And there was, the, but there's genius in there. There's so many spots where it's pure genius. And there's so many moments where it's like, they didn't know how to serve the audience. So they just didn't, you know, he assumed that like, I understand this dialogue. It makes sense to me. So the audience is going to understand it too. And it was like the, the, the lure of it was that the audience didn't understand it. And they were like, I want to know what's going on. Like it's so. So it's like, it was kind of the, the purpose of it and the intention was totally m missed by him as a filmmaker or missed by them as an audience. Like no. did he did he underestimate his audience or, or no? I think he knew what I think he was. Or did he overestimate? His I think audience? he was making a movie for a singular audience and ended up and that's himself and ended up hitting a broad audience on accident on accident. But in doing so, there's a there's a genius to a movie that that 
that says fuck you to the audience you know it's right. like and we all love it we love it when a filmmaker like I think you did that Slap, and I, and I, but, slaps you in the face and goes no more for you you know like that right. we, we love that we love being we love being mistreated by <laughs> by a writer for some reason and this, I, this was the Josh Dobkin thing where he's like, I, everyone hates writers, man. Everyone hates them. Directors hate writers. Writer directors hate writers. He's like, everyone hates the writer. Is that what he said? Yeah. Well, how did that conversation come about where he was? Oh, when I was like, I don't want to write everything I direct. And he's like, good. Everyone hates writers. And like, it just freaking. Oh, did it go off into a, into oh, a yeah, Josh, a, a Josh Trum? Like a, like a tantrum? Yeah, like I don't a, even remember exactly. I think that's how, how it happened. It might have started before that, and that was just a, an included I would love to get him here talking. I would it. love to get him here talking. I've threatened to follow him around and just film stuff. He's he's so funny and interesting. Even even when he does nothing, he's funny and interesting. It were, until you do it six days in a row, and then you're like, huh? Hey, well, no, then he's well, monotonous. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, like, the, like Josh is like- We've the, hit this before. Yeah, Josh is like the <laughs> merry-go-round that has six sections, and, and uh, eventually you're going to get back no, to section one. That's what I was one. talking about, like yeah. the, the last season of People Magazine. The, the last season of that, he was out of work the whole time, so every single, like, I had two weeks of work and then one week off. Right. And they, you know, like the rest of production, you know, like Keys would be out on scouts and- and so I'd have, so I just go hang out in the pool with him, which, and then Jen be super mad when she'd get home or what'd you guys do all day long? It's like, nothing it's, looking at it. This is it. <laughs> I was like, we had to go to the store to get this Coors banquet beer. All right. And that God was, bless her, the den mother. Yeah. An you know arduous what I mean? journey to, uh, to, to the, I don't know, corner gas station or wherever the hell. All right. Before we get to, before we get to like the corner of the one oh one. How wait you so you went to school for recording arts? Yeah, you were gonna be you wanted to be an engineer. You wanted to work in a recording studio. Yeah, I'm like a really <clears> crappy <throat> musician. So I don't think you're crappy. You're much better than I am. But so you wanted to be in a recording studio. You thought that that was going to be the future. Yeah, for you? I, I, I probably or at least the one you plan for. I probably would have done that forever if I, if it had been a thing that was doable. But like home recording studios, like you have to. Oh five was like the year of the home recording home studio recording equipment becoming like you can go for a thousand dollars and and get something get a comparable sound to a bigger studio. And it's like the thing is the the thing that no one realized from the recording studio was that it was going to kill rock bands. Why? Because. Paying for the studio time was what made good music because when you went in there and you had to be serious about it because somebody's dad was spending this money and, <laughs> and, you know, it's always somebody's dad, but like somebody's dad was spending this money to get this right. album made and right. it's going to fucking be good or, or we just ruined his, and then his dad's going to make him, you know, back. he's going to join the army cause he's got to now. <laughs> and then that's, I, I gave you your chance. Now you have to go serve. Yeah. Yeah. It's like now you're going to do what your grandfather did And then you have to Then you know you have that moment where you're like Wait you're sending me and gran Like grandpa walks with a limp Like what are we <laughs> Do you know what you're saying right there? So you think the home recording studio killed rock and roll Yeah To some extent or I mean to it's, ki it's killing it even further than we thought it would Because it's like now you Gibson's going out of business Freaking you know like there, there's The guitar is not the dominant instrument anymore You know the computer is. The computer is. Isn't that terrifying? Which is which is fantastic. I don't even care. Why like, is it fantastic? No, just you're like this weird purist who likes to not be pure. Oh, what to like just watch? No, yeah, you're you're not like watch the world burn kind oh, of guy. You just find, oh, I, I, you, I, I, no, I, I think I, I, think I don't you, want to watch it all burn, but I do. But it's it's like the restructuring that naturally happens is supposed to happen, and everybody is like in denial of that. You know, it's like I'm living in California and then it's like they're, we're having a drought and they're trying to move like water into salamander ponds. So the salamanders that are in that pond don't go extinct from the drought. And I'm like, droughts happen here all the time. <laughs> like, it's not new to here. And the thing that you're doing, putting water in that pond is called eco fucking terrorism. Like <laughs> that species is meant to die off. And they're like, no, it's global warming that's making this drought. It's like, that's not what the striations in the rocks say, man. <laughs> it's like a geologist sits you down for 10 minutes and tell you about every drought that's happened. And like, there are, he'll go over all 30,000 that they have on record, <laughs> you know, like going through this whole thing, like arguing with people about forestry and stuff like that. And it's just like coming from the background, come from that place and everybody's arguing and they're like, well, it's just, it's, it's bull that we, you know, we're just using too much toilet paper. And I'm like, for what? You know, we said we're using it's like, too much you know, oh, this is like a Facebook thing. So I can't, I can't, I, I need to stop. All right. Say, so you lose it. You lose it. Facebook. Paper. So, 
using what, too much toilet what's paper. Your, what's I'm, your like, counter argument? I'm like, what's the alternative? It's like you have to do forestry. You have to maintain these forests or you have to let them burn. Those are your two options. You can't stop every forest fire, let every forest grow the way it is, become a monoculture because the biggest trees cut out the light for everything that existed underneath it. And then you push the wildlife to the edge of the forest where they can get underbrush and things like that. It's like it's meant to burn and then start a new growth. Right. And the fact is, is that like a young growth forest scrubs more air than than an old growth forest. By far, there's more biodiversity there. There's all those things are supposed to happen. You took that off the list so that mom and dad wouldn't lose their house in Malibu. But then at the same time, you're like, well, I don't like them cutting down the trees because I drove through a forest and it was ugly because there were stumps. And it's like. (laughs) What do you want? Well, they could at least pull the stumps. It's like then all the soil erodes away. Like what? You, like it's like people who are like, I, you know, I I saw this thing about how like they put pink slime in meat and stuff like that. And it's like two days ago you were telling me how you respect the Native Americans because they used every piece of the meat. You know, they used every piece of the buffalo, and I wish that's the way we did it. And then you found out that they actually do that. You know, that there's a cow on the Elmer's glue bottle because they used to turn it into glue. There's all the bones and everything. And you're like, well, that's disgusting. And how dare that? It's like, it's predator's guilt, man. That's what it is. Predator's guilt. Yeah. How does this correlate to Rock being dead from the home recording studio? Oh, is that what we're talking about? Yes. Oh. Um, As you can tell, I have a sincere affinity. People just just won't let things die. You know, they don't want to see things die, even though the death of it is natural. You know? Including the art form of rock and roll. Oh, yeah. It's going to go out the way that it's going to go out, and then it'll come back in some small form. People were like, jazz is dead, and it's gone. And then it comes back because people who appreciate it are going to try to emulate it, try to make something, try to, you know, create things on top of that craft. It's like classical music didn't die entirely. There are still composers composing things to this day. And For you can films. Go, for films, but it's not just films, you know, like you can go and you can watch, you know, modern opera. You can watch mo- like things that were written in this decade. You can go see a symphony written by an, you know, by a composer who wrote that symphony within the past two years. You know, it's like the people are still making the music in the, the thing is, is like it, you, you test the fences, you change the confines of it and like rock and roll, the confines change and then they get sucked back in and then, you know, somebody puts a banjo in for a while and that's popular and then <laughs> it's Mumford and Sons. Thing, and then next thing you know, you've got, you know, like, but it's, it's, it's like, there's, so, uh, there's no one tying <clears throat> kids to chairs and being like, listen, you, you really like, I don't even know who to, who to reference in this. What's like a, what's the, what's the top 40 right now? Oh, Nickelback. I don't know. Nickelback's not top 40 <laughs> right now. I don't even know anymore. I don't know if there's anything Canadian on the top 40 anymore. I liked Our Lady Peace. I always thought they were a great band. I had a lot of, I had a lot of fun with Our Lady Peace. All right. So. How do you go from recording arts, you get a degree in recording arts, and you, and you manage to get yourself on film sets? Because you, you made the move to L.A. from Orlando. After, uh, yeah, and I was already working in movies then. You were already doing it? Yeah. So you got your degree, and then you were like, what? I went and I did an internship for like three months in the studio that I worked at, like promoted me an engineer, and then it went out of business. And then you were like, what do, yeah, what do I do? And then I'm sitting there, and I've got two, two weeks worth of paychecks that aren't going to cash Clear. they're yeah. gonna bounce and and uh and everyone i knew around me was they were all film students so it's like so i started working it. i always loved film and i had, i had always been like making vhs films and things like yeah. that my my cousin so I. my cousin nate and i used to we used to do two vcrs and freaking cut that's how we used to that's how i did it yeah. too yeah and uh it's and, exhausting yeah but you'd you'd film some stuff and then you'd cut in explosions from other movies that's what you would do yeah so that's because you can't afford to do an explosion. Anything we ever tried never looked that good. And when you know, like we nearly burnt down New York a couple of times, probably trying to. So you know. did you, did you, did you jump from, to film? Cause you already graduated. So you jumped to like what student films in Orlando? I did some student films. You're doing sound for like them, that. weren't you? Yeah. But that was just cause there wasn't a lot of, sa- there wasn't a lot of actual sound guys that, that. I didn't, I don't remember anybody being in the film program going like, I can't wait to be a sound guy or a boom op. Yeah, there wasn't anybody for that. And I've actually, ne- I've, I've boomed before yeah. as a sound mixer. I've never just boomed. I've never just been a boom operator. Because you were a mixer boom operator. Yeah. And then I built out like a weird, uh, like a really weird kit, probably ahead of its time at the time where I was using like a Pro Tools setup on set. So how do you, so how do you get to LA from there? Like what made you make the jump? Because it was a couple of you that came out, wasn't it? Uh, myself, Derek Vass, and Lee Gonzalez. All three of you came out at the same time. You guys were all living yeah, together. No, we you? drove out in like a train. We stopped by. Oh, you Lee's. put your cars on the train, didn't you? No, no. We drove out 
just three in a row the whole way to LA. Three different cars. Oh no, no, we were talking. Josh and I used to talk about putting our cars on the train to go from Pennsylvania to Orlando because there was a train <laughs> yeah, in that Sanford you, that you could like yeah 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 pop it on. So what happens when you get to LA? Because you have no prospects or or oh no, I, I had a couple friends did you? offering like hooking me up with stuff. So Josh Josh Douglas hooked me up with uh, last was it last time standing yeah. And then I got absorbed by another department, and I didn't even work with him anyway. But he got me into the job that got me into the into the sound department with them. And then how many years did you do sound, and what did you what did you work on? Because at some point you went from from we did like all so the first like two years were in Orlando, and that was all sound. I didn't do any like lighting then. Well, I, I'm, I'm I'm bringing it up because you went from like the, the here's the, here's the two things you need in a film: an image and something to hear. Yeah. So you went from something to hear, and you were pretty damn good at it, you know, to I, I want to work on what you see and how you see it. Yeah, I mean the visual part is that it's it's more difficult for sure. Yeah, but what? So, but how did? But how did? Like, did everybody look at? Because I don't remember having the conversation with you because you and I weren't really like tight, as in like I'd call you while I was in a bubble bath. Or vice versa. Who like are it, you calling while you're in a bubble? Bed? I, I, I kind of don't. I don't have a tub at my house, so I kind of oh, now okay. that's my thing. <laughs> I'm like, that's my hope. Is that some one day have a bubble bath? Yeah, like one point I want to call you and Josh from a bubble bath, and hopefully you guys are in a bubble bath also together. It doesn't have to be. We can we can right. Facetime. You, you know, put eno- we we put enough. I was gonna say bath salt. <laughs> <laughs> put enough put enough uh, bubble bath liquid in his pool, and we'll make it work. That thing will survive it. Yeah, yeah, that's like a that's like a, like a good, concrete that's a, hole in the ground. Yeah, it's literally painted painted sky blue. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you make the jump from and why? I don't remember. I was it just I wanted to do it. I asked a bunch of friends that were that were in lighting department if I could come out and help out and things like that. And then I just slowly started to fall in love with it. I mean, like the the lighting part of it. Light lighting is is it's not super difficult. It's it's see now cinematographers all around are gonna be like he's crazy. No, it's not super difficult. It's the, it's the, it's a version of three. When you're talking about human faces, it's a version of three point lighting always, all the time. Whether one of the points is shadow or one of the points is fill or, you know, you always have a key and some form of backlight or separation from maybe a back wall. So you don't put a backlight on the character, but right. the separation is the, there's a slash on the wall or something like that, or maybe put some purple on it and make a Cinemax movie or something. <laughs> like, you know, but <laughs> yeah, I know, right? There's, but there's, but it's like you choose those styles and you choose everything else. Now, the, the thing that always kind of drove me nuts was that like when I was coming up, cameras have gotten so fast now that you don't have to be, you don't have to be the person doing everything. Fast in terms of, I, uh, in terms of like, um, like setting it up and, ISO, and let's ISO. go. No, just oh, ISO. okay. Like being able to figure, being able to shoot <clears throat> at well, the at, Sony, the Sony A7, just, yeah, kind of changed high, that. Higher, higher, uh, the higher ISO you can do. Higher ISO on just hands down, like things, just like cameras see in the dark. You know, it's like you have cameras that physically you don't have to. I mean, even C three hundred Mark II, we shot my film in C three hundred Mark II. Yeah. I used street lights. We blocked to the street lights and, and lit the movie that way. You See, know? Now I have a I have a cinematographer buddy who I, I wanted you to meet, but he's actually working. And and we have these arguments all, all the time. And I kind of take the point of view of you where it's like, why do we need a, a, a grip like a one ton grip truck? Like, why do we need if all the architecture is already doing half of the work? Then, then all I need to do is augment that. See, the, 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 that goes with the thing of like, what's the, you know, like, uh, what's the difference between God and a cinematographer? What? God doesn't think he's a cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's, that is the thing where it's like, you get there. And like, I've walked into some locations with like younger cinematographers where it's like, you walk in a location, you're doing a tech scout. And they immediately start naming off the lights and they're like, we're going to black out those windows and then put a light in. And it's like, why? There's sunlight. It, it's not going to change enough. We have three hours to shoot this scene. Right. If the light is not going to change enough to make a difference, especially when you're talking about diffing it down and everything. It's like, it's like, so we're going to do a crap load extra work to make sure that that's not the sun doing the work. It's your light. Right. For you to feel like I'm doing a bunch of work. Is that, is that so they can feel like they put their DNA in it so that they, like they can justify 
I guess, man. I don't the know. Crew I don't know. or whatever. I don't, I don't really because I want because I want to get to your film and I want to. I, I don't wanna... know how to analyze that version of narcissism. Like that's its own thing. <laughs> like it's because cool, I remember doing the I remember doing the roommate with you. So we so Josh and it was a Josh. Did Sean write the script or did both of them write the script or oh, who knows? Who I knows? don't remember. I don't remember. But I rem- still have footage from that movie. Do you really? Yeah, because I'd we, love to we cut used, it. We use my laptop to like download stuff. Oh, I'd love to cut it. So I still have that footage somewhere, if like you, on the drive. If you want, I'll send you a drive and give it to me. We can we can release I think it Josh to the world. has a full run of it. I'm missing. Scenes. I've never seen. He's it. He's got a full run of like the footage for that. So we there are shots in that movie that are beautiful. Right, but remember they didn't think I could. Th- I thought that they, they I was they they insisted that the backyard would not work for a quad, at like a small community college. And I remember you came in, right? And we had like that shitty dolly track set up. And I think we were shooting on like that, a Panasonic. That amazing and wonderful dolly track. Oh my, it was, was made from Home Depot. It was awesome. It was, it was heavy as shit, yeah, right? Yeah, it was super heavy. So we, if that, I remember that correctly. That has got to be good enough to carry water through it at high pressure. So like it so, totally works as a dolly so track. We, so we had, um, you're talking about PVC pipe. <laughs> no, no, it wasn't PVC. It was steel. Was it really? Yeah. Okay. So I remember that um what were we shooting on it was like it was like the one up from the dvx 100 it would like shoot like 720 no, it was an hvx was it an hvx yeah it was an hvx it was a, it was i'm a, saying dvx it was like the panasonic up from like the hvx and then you had to get like that that yeah you had to weird... do a fire store recorder was that what we were using right no but we had it it was like some adapter for the lenses oh no that was just to get the 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 that was just to get depth of field yeah, because the cameras didn't have those. For so, yeah. was, so do we but use, it shake. Do we use it like the a Red l- Rock or the Letus? It was the Red Rock. Okay, so the Red Rock is a spinning glass. So it's like one part. So it's got a glass wheel inside of it, and a triangle on it is soft, and then the rest of it is clear. So as it goes past, it softens things up, and then the things that aren't quite sharp on the image that you've chosen with right. your lens, which you're able to put a larger flange distance and like 35 millimeter lens on, things like that. So or it's, uh, 35 for frame equivalent lenses, not right. not a 35 millimeter lens. Right. But, and after you put that on there, that spinning, rotating, you know, beast of spun of, of the spinning glass would... Looks like an alternator that yeah, you put in front was, of the lens. It would, it, would, it would actually make the things with the deeper focus and have the same shutter effect that a film camera has. So we, so going back to this backyard scene, like the backyard at that street was shitty. It was nasty. It was awesome. It was filled with spiders, but it was awesome. Filled with spiders. Spiders everywhere. Like a black lot, there was a black lot of, widows, everything. There was a lot of real estate back there, and there was like three different levels, and then like... But you, but you came in, and you said... I think Josh goes, well, how are we going to light this? And then you went, watch. And you went over, and I think you got like a Mondo combo, or whatever those are. Like the big stand. Mambo, yeah. Mambo, Mambo yeah. combo. It wasn't a Mambo. And then you put like a 4 by 4 reflector. Yeah. And that was it. Well, yeah, that's. And then all you went, and you went. Josh, as the sun moves, we'll move this. Yeah. It, well, it's, why would you? But I, but that was it. That was the I, when I he was had there. I was like, expectations. You've been working bigger shows and things like that, where you do have to control everything because you're shooting a single scene for like eight hours. But the moment you put that up, and you didn't say anything. I remember you didn't say anything. You're like, because you have that like with him. You just have that like, oh, just wait. And you went over and you just kind of put it up and you just went, and you were like, and Josh was like, oh. And I just remember that. Do you remember being in the bathtub? Oh, yeah. Do you remember being, I was the working the camera and I was bathtub. getting the stupid bathtub and then we did, we had to dig the hole. The digging the hole was my favorite part of the movie. Do you know why? And that's how I stole for the movie that I did. Well, that's what I was saying. Whereas like that you and way, I went, put the fucking work lights in there. That was my light. Why are we going to deny it? That was my lighting setup. And I was like, I want to, and, and yeah, no, and there was like a weird conversation before that where they're like but I mean, we don't want to see and I'm like well, how are they out there what are they just like and yeah. he, somebody said moonlight and I was like fuck your moonlight like we're not doing fucking moonlight <laughs> I'm like I've never like just I, I'll do moonlight if you want to try to do actual like the feel of moonlight but that's like the softest softest light which is not what you want you want a ratio and you want that friggin yeah you don't want to light up want everything a, you want, you want stark. a gnarly look and yeah. I'm like no moonlight is flat and it washes yeah you know and nobody ever wants to do that they're like I want deep contrasty moonlight and that's like bro that's not the way moonlight works yeah. it works that way in your bedroom but it doesn't work that way out in, in life a, in a field yeah <laughs> you know um so that was kind of like the only project that like we ever worked on together. And for some reason it never got cut. (laughs) 
the behind the scenes was cut within like two minutes <laughs> and the rest of it was the behind the scenes is just me complaining though i think i still have that do you have that somebody has the behind the scenes so how do you okay so so i leave right and when i yeah. leave when i leave la to come back here and i guess sow my oats and figure out who the fuck i am what do you do in the interim until i see you again i mean the world stopped for and then nothing happened when I left until like now where we're back together. Aww. But everything in between is just you make me feel like the only person <laughs> yeah, on this right. planet. So thank you so much. Um, but you worked on a lot of shows with like a lot of people doing a lot of things. A lot of things. A lot of horror. Can you mo- run through them real quick? Movies and things like that. Um, like some of the jobs and some of the gigs you worked. A bunch of stuff with Adam Green. Like if we did. I don't know. I helped out with Hatchet Two, but I didn't work it. And then uh, Hatchet Three, so a third Hatchet movie. Um, two seasons of Holliston for Adam and Adam Green and Joe Lynch. Joe Lynch has a movie out right now. If you get a chance to catch it, uh, it's called Mayhem, and it truly is Mayhem. Yeah, to it's <clears throat> it's true to its name. Um, oh, then like just a bunch of commercials and things like that. But so who like who are some of the clients? Going to buy door locks and things like that. You know, I can really I can tell you that the Kivo Convert works great now. <laughs> And, uh, but you were telling me like you did like commercials for like Gorilla Glue and well, Gorilla Glue is like that's I did their their last ad buy run, and then I but I've been I've been gaffing um, for those guys for, uh, working as a gaffer for them for a long a long time. But in so. the midst of that, you've been you were writing. Yeah. So let me so so this 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 kid who works with lumber gets in an emo band decides to go be a sound engineer at recording studios, ends up being an onset sound mixer, then moves to the camera department and tries to learn like G and E and moving your way up to, to being like, you know, a cinematographer who knows what the fuck he's talking about. I did art department too in there for a little bit. Somewhere in there. Yeah. I did. And then I did a dove commercial. I don't know why they hired me. But I did like you did a, the art department for a Dove I commercial. Did, uh, yeah, I, I was an art director for for a Dove commercial, and like I had met the dude like three days before that at our apartment building, and he like Weird. was visiting a friend or something like that. And he's like, "Oh, we need an art director for this like Dove commercial." And it was a it was a spec commercial, but they were dropping like big money on it. So we had like a bathtub scene thing with the lady like washing herself off with the Dove, and then she's like picking oranges, and I like I made orange trees out of like. You made orange trees. Yeah, because you can't just go buy like a fully in bloom like friggin' <laughs> here are oranges on it. So we like we bought the plastic oranges and then had ones that she could peel and everything that she could pick off the tree. And we figured out ways to like, which I was like, and she was talking about it. I'm like, you can you can peel the skin off it. You can't open it up. And she's like, why? And I'm like, because there's a metal rod through there that holds it to the tree for when you pick it. <laughs> and uh, so when you open that up, people are going to be like, that's not natural at all. No. And they wanted to do that in like one shot. And I was like, no, it's two shots. Like this, this, this is not. <laughs> Just cut this, it. It's, yeah, you'll be it's fine. Not, it's not magic, guys. Like it's not, <laughs> I, you know, I'm not, I'm not sitting in the back like. But in the, but in the midst of this, like you're writing. Yeah. Everybody writes. It's LA. Everyone writes. I, but, you, but then you go, fuck it. I'm going to go do it. Yeah, yeah. I so ha- what was what was the thing like? So then, like in the midst of this, like you're you're working like these, the, you know these they're they're not glamorous to the general public. No, but 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 they pay the bills. Yeah, and they're not like snuff. I mean, uh, that's the objective, you know, like to do some snuff eventually. No, I'm joking. <laughs> to, uh, to eight millimeter yeah. seven it. Yeah. Uh, but where did you write? write the script for this for this I film didn't, I hadn't this was this was one of the scripts this, that I, this blew me away I hadn't written it yet I had a treatment for it and we were gonna go do a we like uh, so my my friend Ed Stevens who Edwin Stevens it's important yeah um, and just, you know just a great guy We've been hanging out and working for him because he's a cinematographer and like doing stuff and talking about movie ideas and things like that and then uh, he bought a BMW. It was like a BMW like his sister had. And his sister uh, was like, she was, she was like, sh- like shot and killed. Oh, so Jesus. He's, like, not, he's doing a documentary about it right now. It's really, it's like. Uh, it's heavy shit. Yeah. Super okay. Um, but he shows up. <clears throat> he wants to show me this new. BMW. BMW. Yeah. And it's like the hard top convertible and everything. And like, it's oh, M class. Oh. Like, All right. So he shows up in this, and I'm like, we could have shot a movie for this, dude. Like, this is such a, you know, like. <laughs> and then, that, like, 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 
He was coming over all proud to be like, look at my car and show it off. And you were like, dude, we, we could have made a movie. <laughs> oh, no, I geeked out about it when he pulled up. But then as we're driving around, I'm like, I'm like, this is like this. This car is we could have shot a movie for this. Like, I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking 30 grand. I don't know how much the car actually costs. I think it's right. like a $50,000 car. Right. Whatever. I don't know. And right. It's like he bought it. I don't know if it was used. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The, okay. the, my, but then he was like, okay, let's do a feature. So, Just like that. Yeah. Um, and then I pitched him this I this uh, one man drama in, on a spaceship that I really wanted to do <laughs> about a about a guy who's going to like stop a rogue planet that's going to go cl- too close to to Earth and just like throw us away from the sun. So that was your idea. So he's going to go and blow it up. He's on the ship where he's having to go and blow it up. And as he does the math, he finds out that like his the payload of his ships, you know, like the ordinance, isn't enough to actually move the rogue planet enough Sounds so like it's sunshine so it's still gonna end the world right you know and and when he realizes he's like i want to go home you know like <laughs> you <laughs> bastards and and like the ship's computer which is like a, wo- a woman's brain in a jar because you know in my mind i'm like ai is super dangerous and eventually we're gonna outlaw it for sure um which, so let's put a woman's brain in a jar so yeah so it'll be human brains and you just get to live on forever uh, attached to the server you right. know like and so it's a woman's brain in a jar and she's talking to him <laughs> and like the, even that is based on this like really and i don't think we'll ever make the movie so i can definitely ruin the movie now but the or, i kind of want you to make this movie the, originally the whole point to the film was to get to the end of it because the brain in the jar was going to be named felicia and he could say bye felicia Right before they blow you're up, you're shitting me. No, that was this the, is your whole thing. <laughs> so you're doing like this serious pitch. Oh, just super deep, serious. And then the whole point was to get one joke for like myself and Josh Amato, one of the producers <laughs> for the film. And like it was our, just our stupid joke. But I had built this whole drama around it. And there's like there's a lot of stuff that's way too expensive in the film that we just couldn't do. Right. We could probably do it here, type of thing, you know, where it's like you just weld a frame. But I wanted to roll a whole hallway. So that he can get pulled against the wall. You know my family owns a steel business, right? Yeah, well, that's okay. what I'm saying. It'd be easier to do here <laughs> than out there. But it's like, yeah, roll this hallway and have him held against the wall, you know, by the artificial gravity of the spaceship. Oh, kind of like the using. thing they did with uh, um, Inception. Yeah, sort yeah. of like that. Except for, well, I mean, that one's just like, what is it? Like, they had a lot of money. It's because they're inside somebody's head and they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, but this one was just like... the you're making a space movie. I don't want them floating around the whole time. That would drive me nuts having right. to try to film that. So there's artificial gravity plating on the ship, which he uses throughout the whole movie. Like he uses it to try to turn the ship around. He, he creates a gravity well outside the ship using the plating to try to slingshot the ship around because she won't give him controls of the ship. So he's like, I'll do it manually. Screw you. And he goes and he starts like actually trying to like chart out how he would create a mass of friggin' a gravity. gravity well outside of the ship with his own plating from the ship and slingshot back around it to head back to earth. Not thinking that she'll just turn the thing back around anyway. So it doesn't matter, but, but like getting through this part and then she holds him against the wall with the gravity and starts like, she puts him under like three G four G and she's like crushing his lungs and he can't breathe. And you know, but she's telling him like, you're, Stop. Pan- you're Hell. panicking, quit it, bro. Like right. we're going, we're, we're doing this. Right. And she's trying to tell him this whole time. She's trying to just be like, listen, it's like, you're, the thing is, is that like, yeah, you've got a wife back home. You've got everything else, but, but you, you don't, do you want her to live in a world that knows it's going to end in like 12 months? You know? Like, and it's like, you, you, I guarantee you don't, you know, like I guarantee the worst part of every society, it'd be like purge for 12 months straight, you know, yeah, and then, and then, and what then, are you going to do? Send me to jail? Yeah. Like, and then Thanos yeah. like that, like, and then it's all gone. But this is the thing that I love about you, right? There's a lot of thought that was put into that, like oh, gravity yeah. wells and blah, blah, blah. To oh, have- we, we sat down and did the math for it too, which was the weird part. And then, and then we got to the point where we we're like doing all this math and like, okay, so everything's feasible. We don't know how to make the technology to do it, but the, the way the technology reacts to things is feasible. We're like, this totally works. And we're sitting back and we're like, no one's going to give a shit about any of this math. Like no one's ever going to care but, about any of this stuff. But here's the thing that I love about you is like you did it, to, you, 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 you committed so much to make it work. Yeah. For by Felicia. Yeah, well, that's where it started. That was the joke. And that was a joke. So that- wait, but so 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 the question of where creativity comes from is is a, is a lot oh, of it's necessity. A, you you have to have it. I mean, is this like the conversation that we would have where we just like rant and rave and just go off on these tangents about like, you know, and then the mothership comes and then there's like Howie Mandel's there, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's like that, that yeah. crazy shit. But then like somewhere in that 
absurdity is like, well, wait, no, actually there's like a serious thing in there that we could probably explore and people would actually kind of like. Yeah. And, and finding that moment in everything that you, everything that you see. My, that, that moment of like, this is ridiculous, but there's something in there. This is that, something that's ridiculous. Well, this is, so this is the thing that like. We're I all over the fucking map on yeah. this one. Yeah. I don't, I don't see myself as a patient person. Um, <laughs> But my wife does, and I don't understand why. And I was talking to her, and she's like, well, Christy sees you as patient? Yeah. she's So Christy sees me as patient, but she was telling me, she's like, you're, it's like you're, you're empathetic. So like when I come home and I'm super fuming about something, you always try to look at it from the person who pissed me off's point of view, and you usually talk me out of it. And I'm like, I wish I could do that for myself. But, <laughs> but, uh. And she's gotten good at it now, so then she uses it, and then it just makes me It's mad, really, it's but. really strange for, to, for you to admit that you apparently have empathy. Oh, no, I have tons of empathy. But that's weird coming from somebody who wants to watch the world burn. No, I mean, you want everybody, it's it's just natural. Like I said. The world I've, burning. Yeah. I'm, t- I'm talking about from like an it anarchistic point a, of oh, view. Oh, no, from the anarchy point of view, that's just because everything else is not fun. You know, like socialism's not fun. It's not fun. Anarchy's fun. Socialism's <laughs> not fun. You know, communism's definitely not fun. Definitely not fun. You know, it's like. How's capitalism doing for you? No, it's, it's, yeah. If it was, I don't know. If, if it wasn't are, rigged, it would be good. Yeah. If it was, if, if I didn't feel like I was walking to the casino every day, I think I, <laughs> it would be better. If it wasn't, if it wasn't like, you know, the, oh, there's this really funny moment. Uh, Adam Green, who's like, you know, he grew up, his, both his parents are teachers. And, uh, and it's like, he's on a film set and he managed, you know, like, so it's just the idea. It's, you know, he made the slasher movie and it became epic and everything else. And like, people just really latched onto it. And he's on set and somebody he's passing by goes like, wish my dad owned a dealership. Like, <laughs> that moment. <laughs> and I feel like that's like everywhere all the time. It's like, and everyone tells you like, you can totally pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's like you drive by, like you're in the car with the right person. And they're like, why doesn't that homeless guy get a job? And it's like, you ever try to get a job without a fucking address or a shower? Like, <laughs> like- <laughs> is it, it because people don't ask, ask the follow up? I think it's my, 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 uh, my one friend used to say checkers outsells chess, which means to yeah. me that like no one, you know, oh, that person's an asshole. Why? Well, you don't get, well, you see the thing, the thing is, is like that the homeless guy needs to get a job, but yeah. like you try getting a job when you, when you don't have an address or a shower, Yeah. which, like, which is like, oh, well that puts it in a whole different point of view. Like it, 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 it takes it from like judgmental anger to like almost sympathetic. I, I kind of want to help that person yeah, I want to just, help. just by saying that and I have that and moment the situation has not changed I, I like using this one and hopefully if my dad ends up watching this he's going to realize that like, this is my this is my like queen's gambit right here <laughs> the moment, but it's like what if that was grandma you know every time <laughs> every time anytime it's like we're just not agreeing on something where like I'm being a little bit too soft and he's trying to just be like all freaking like straight put my foot down like right, there's right. no gray area here right. and every time and I'm like He's talking about refugees, and I'm like, but what if they were grandma? <laughs> what does he do? And then, he, I, I don't know. He, he, I, he, I, I don't know. I've used it a couple of times, and every time he's like, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. But, you know. <laughs> but I get it. Let's disregard that point for yeah. a moment he's like, while I go back to how I believe. Yeah, he's like, that's that's not important. The, the importance is jobs. And I'm like, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you entirely that there are not enough jobs for everyone in the world to live in one spot. Right. You know, like it just wouldn't work. Plus, I don't want to li- like if you think about putting like 40 New York cities on top of each other, like I, I'd, I'd kill myself. That's just dread shit, man. Yeah. That's dude, like- I don't want to live in like the <clears throat> endless high, ra- especially when like I've, you know, I've, I've been to the Dakotas. OK, <laughs> there's nothing but land out there, guys. Like <laughs> there's like there's seriously like you can go some spaces and then you'll find like the one like soft serve ice cream shack where you're like people have to drive like 60 miles <laughs> to get to work at the soft yeah. serve ice cream place to get to get the fucking twist with sprinkles yeah <laughs> and it's like and like the people that are working there they don't live anywhere near it either you know <laughs> they have to drive an hour to serve ice cream <laughs> <laughs> to serve ice cream to the people that are driving hours to get there people drive an hour to get there <laughs> that's what I'm saying there's like just ran- just random like little <laughs> pop up all right. Speaking of like eight New York cities or 11 New York cities on yeah. top of each other, you made a film called Hunting Land. Yeah. Hunting Lands. Hunting Lands, plural. Yeah. And tell me about uh, the genesis of it and 
uh, tell me every tell me everything that you can up until shoot day one. <laughs> Within reason, Zach. Not like you know. I mean, we and then did. there were dinosaurs, yeah, and then no. the Arabs came. No, I mean, I wish, <laughs> I wish that was in there. No, the the. Yeah, so we were working on like getting that space movie together, and right. then and then we went to lunch at uh, and this is a this is a ploy. If you ever get to Burbank, go to Harry's. Okay, uh, it's a family diner, and it's fantastic. Uh, get the Reuben, which um, you just had, yeah, from Brunetti's. I know. Welcome was, to Scranton. Uh, yeah, this is, there's Rubens everywhere. If you're not trying the Reuben, then you don't know what the In quality town? of the yeah. city is. Yeah, like, you don't know. Yeah, that's just so you're at Harry's. Is. So we're at Harry's and we're sitting there and, you know, like, God, you know, just uh, trying to go over it. And we're trying to, like, just kind of make that leap over the, like, well, do we cut the big scene because we can't afford to do it? But then does that <clears throat> does that ruin the movie? Is that the sort of thing that we want to do and everything else? And then it was odd. I was like, uh, Edwin was like, well, what else you got? And then I pitched him, like, the three other, like, treatments that I'd totally be willing to, to take a run at. Because we didn't want to do a horror movie or anything like right. that. So. Um, and then I, hunting Lance was like one of the ones I had pitched earlier and, and he's, he's from Maine. Uh, Josh Amato, who's one of our producers on the film, he's, he's from, uh, Michigan and his family had the cabin up near where we were, where we ended up shooting. And I don't know, it just, it kind of speaks to us. I mean, it's, it's, it's a thriller. It's kind of got revenge movie aspect to it, but the slow burn, very limited dialogue version of it was. What year was this that you guys are talking about this? Two years ago. Is this pre-Revenant? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's... I'm just saying. It's before the movie came out, I believe. Yeah, so you... I wrote the film before the movie came out. <clears throat> the real bummer was that we were shooting... But the treatment was before that, right? Before oh, the, you probably even knew about the tr- it. The treatment's 10 years old. Okay. About. Because that's kind of like... Part of the feel of that the was The treatment that. I wrote in Florida. Did you really? Yeah. Okay. So, so you're that was one in like a composition notebook of like just random... Ideas? Junk. Yeah, there's just, there's, there's terrible stuff. There's a bunch of Ice Age stuff. I was really obsessed with like a new Ice Age. I thought that that was great for a long, like day after tomorrow, but yeah. like, but good. Haven't we and not said enough with Roland Emmerich or? Yeah. No, I figured. <laughs> Is there you more could to do, say about the I Ice figured, Age? I figured you could, you could really just dive in there. Like I wanted to see what like a functioning, every single time they go to the thing where like, and then there's cannibals. And I'm like, I want, I just want to see it. I want to see it work out. I want to see it be difficult, but I want to see it work out. And that's the thing. It's like, I've never seen anything where like you actually get to see it. Every like dystopian future is always about like right before it's about to end. And I'm like, like why the planet? Well, no, or like the society is about to get cracked open and they're going to do it a different way from now on. You know, right. like, like, and some of them are like, I, I love the movies. Equilibrium. I love. It's a great movie. But it's a dystopian future. And it's, you know, like it's, and he's going to crack it wide open and, and. Well, it's like and, 1984. And, and Sean, Sean Bean, Sean Bean, Sean Bean. Sean Bean. Yes. Yeah. He's, he's, he, and he, well, you know, Sean Bean was originally in the front and it was Christian Bale. Yeah. Sean Bean was the one who stopped taking his meds. Yeah. And then he, and he found the puppy. Oh yeah, and like a bu- oh the he's, fucking puppy he's, killed he's me. Reading novels and he's got a puppy in the trunk and oh, stuff. Oh, the puppy killed me. He's not supposed to read novels. No. Dystopian futures you're not supposed to read. Illiteracy is king. No, it's like Fahrenheit night four fifty one. It's like you, you just got to burn all that stuff. That's a- yeah, burn it because it because it because free thought is Did dangerous. Did they burn the Bible? I don't know. I don't know about that book. I know the HBO movie was bad. Because that's the question. Do they? There's a new one coming out. They're made, they made I saw another it. one. You saw the new? Yeah, the HBO one. Is that the HBO? One? Yeah. So it Michael was- Shannon and. Uh, uh, what's it, the dude from Creed? Oh, Fruitvale Station. Uh, Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, Michael I, B. Jordan's awesome. He's phenomenal. Um, all right. So you're at Harry's. So we're at Harry's, and we 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 <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Jeez, that was twelve minutes. That yeah. You, that anyone who listens to this is never gonna get back. Never. Ever. Um, I'm gonna give you thirty more minutes, and then we're done. <laughs> what's it at now? An hour. Jeez, <laughs> I need two just to get through this. I know you're gonna have to do it fast. Like, why man. you split them into two? Part one, part two. And we then could. We'll do it that way. We could. Let's just keep going. We could we figure it out. We could. There's enough fucking tangents to make an edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>